Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order, and I'm going to try to uh, share on the screen the draft agenda. Uh, with, uh, I did send the, the draft agenda and the last month's minutes out <clears throat> in the email. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I, sent, them, I sent them again last night, so uh, everyone should have seen it, but I'm going to... Uh, I move adoption of the agenda. Okay. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Moved and seconded that we adopt the agenda. Um, all those in favor, please um, uh, use the reactions button on the bottom of your screen uh, and press you can either do the hands up or the, the, the yes. I, I, I understand that sometimes you have a yes and sometimes you don't. Uh, or a no, if you really hate the agenda. Did we have a treasurer's report sent? Uh, we should this have a treasurer's Angie. report. I, I haven't seen uh, okay. Brian yet. I, I assume he will be, be here. Okay, just checking. Thank you. Okay, uh, the, the agenda is approved. Okay, let's go right on. And the um, the next item on the agenda is um, the introduction of elected officials at, and candidates. Um, and I see Judge Mary. Can, uh, hold your hands up and introduce yourselves. What the heck? <laughs> can you can you, can you drop your screen share? Yeah, this I will. is Mary, Mary. This is Mary Angie, District Clerk. Good morning. How is everyone? Good. Good Thank morning. You. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, Justice Watkins, Judge Good. Mary. Good morning, everyone. I was so excited to, to, I'm so excited to see so many friendly faces. I cannot wait until we get to meet together again and I get to give everybody big hugs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will be wonderful. Uh, Judge Mary. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to see you all as it is every month. And I'm so happy for the great news that Justice Beth Watkins gave us. That is fantastic and very much looking forward to hear the comments of my good friend, Linda Chavez Thompson. Good morning, everyone. And Joe Gonzalez. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be with all my friends and congratulations on the death of the Joan Huffman bill. Uh, that's <laughs> something we need to do. And just one more thing. I just want to let everybody know that we're uh, about to roll out our midterm report. Uh, it will be up on our website in about another week or so. It, it will basically report on what we've been doing the first uh, half of uh, our administration. So I'm excited to share that with you all. Hmm. Great. Chief Justice Rebecca Martinez. Rebecca. Good morning, Bob, everyone. It's uh, nice to see one, everyone at least virtually. Um, just my, uh, my, all my best to uh, my friend and comadre and mentor, Linda Chavez Thompson. Um, and I'll have to beg my leave. Obviously, these um, issues may percolate up to my lap. So I'm going to uh, uh, drop the call, but I didn't, uh, didn't want to uh, um, have the meeting start with at least me saying hello, Linda. I hope one day we get to see each other soon. And uh, thank you for your um, decades of service uh, being a gladiator out um, in this arena. So thank you very much and everyone have a blessed day. Take care. Good to see you. Uh, Ezra Johnson, our redoubtable candidate for District 10 City Council. Well, uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you, uh, NEBCD for your un unwavering support uh, in this election. Uh, just give you a very quick update. Uh, things are going extremely well. We just knocked our 10,000th door uh, yesterday. We have sent uh, 4,000 uh, applications for vote by mail. Uh, we have reached out to voters uh, literally tens of thousands of times, uh, and that's all been due to your help and support. I know that there are folks out there today and tomorrow who are going to be doing even more. And so I, I can't thank you enough. Um, we're having a virtual fundraiser on April the 18th. Uh, we'll be putting out information about that. It's gonna be exciting. Uh, we've got you know, musical uh, guests. Um, it, it's, uh, it, I think it's gonna be a fun event. Uh, it, it's gonna be virtual, as I mentioned, and we'll be sending the links around. 
and um, Rachel Laven is uh, going to be our, our main musical uh, guest, and I'm really looking forward to it. So won't take up too much more of your time. Thank you all so very much, and um, well, let's keep going. Thank you. Special note, if you don't mind my interrupting, but uh, I'm having uh, a meet the candidate, and that candidate for me happens to be my future councilman, Ezra Johnson. So at four o'clock today at my house, 6226 Meadow Haven Drive, anybody wants to drop by, we've got snacks, drinks, and meet the candidate uh, as well. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, it's thank you, bad. Linda, and I will. I'll put my uh, campaign website information in the chat. Thank you all very much. Okay, and uh, uh, Judge uh, Jacqueline Valdez. Good morning. Thank you for having me, and it's great to see everybody virtually. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful Saturday. Thank you so much. Okay, without uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. A, a point of personal privilege. Of course. I would like to acknowledge that we have a newly wed among us. I uh -huh. see a picture of uh, Paul Furukawa. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there any other candidates who are elected with us this morning? I think I've got everybody. Okay. Then we're going to move on to the next item on our agenda, which is. Uh, Linda Chavez Thompson, who's going to talk to us about uh, collective bargaining. Fire away, Linda. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, when I received it, I said, wow, Northeast Democrats are in gear. Uh, when we're talking about this particular issue, uh, there's several signs that are going out there and says, uh, uh, stop defunding the police and uh, don't be fooled. Uh, by voting uh, no, well, don't be fooled, vote no on proposition, on this proposition. But a lot of people don't understand what collective bargaining is. Union members, of course, do. Union leaders, such as the ones that are, that are here with me today. And like I said, I am intimidated because in all honesty, I have never been able to collectively bargain because my union members were public employees. And under the state laws of Texas, public employees here, other than fire and police, uh, are prohibited from collectively bargaining. And over 23 years that I represented public employees here in San Antonio in the city, the county, housing authorities, school districts, uh, they were all public employees and they were all denied the right to bargain collectively. We did, however, have the right to collectively beg. And that is what you get if you don't have collective bargaining. You collectively beg. Uh, you allow yourself to yell and scream at city managers and city mayors and city council people, and then they give you what they want when it comes to pay raises or working conditions or benefits. Uh, what we have here is a situation where a group of people decided uh, and were funded by unknown sources, from my understanding, uh, with monies to deny collective bargaining to the police officers and no, the police union is not an AFL-CIO union, but it is a union. Whether they call themselves a union or an association, the SAPOA, the San Antonio Police Officers Association, is by rights have collective bargaining. So do the firefighters. The San Antonio AFL-CIO has taken a very strong position. We have put together a very strong campaign to try to educate the public here in San Antonio about what collective bargaining is. It is about sitting down and working out the problems that you may have between management and labor. It is not meet and confer because meet and confer is just sitting down talking and doing nothing. But collective begging is the other source. You take away collective bargaining, they then are having to collectively beg to keep good working conditions, good wages, uh, benefits, et cetera, for their union members. And for us, if they, if they've come after the police department today or this police union today, who's next? The firefighters? Because they do also have collective bargaining rights. And we have to protect them as well as we have to protect the labor movement here. A lot of people don't realize that collective bargaining and raising wages and getting good benefits and retirement benefits as well for people who work in the union movement 
also allows the competition to where some of you may have reaped those benefits as well because uh, they have go after one, they go after all of us. And that is why we are taking it very, very much as an affront. And, and the problem is this is coming at us from people who have been supportive of organized labor in the past. We have, uh, as a labor council, supported the efforts of the organization who put this on the ballot. They went out, they got the signatures, and, and it's all uh, not really clear even in our heads. It isn't even clear in our heads what it is that they went after. Uh, they have made arguments about the police officer who uh, fed feces to a uh, homeless person, which was absolutely against the law and wrong. But guess what? And guess who reported this police officer? It was his other friends, his other police officers who reported him and because it was wrong. Uh, they have made other examples of police officers and taking away their collective bargaining right means that they're getting back at these officers that none of them had it, have anything to do with the feces uh, sandwich or with what the issues they're arguing about. As some of my brothers and sisters who are on uh, here will also uh, testify to if, if need be, collective bargaining is when your union members are not being treated correctly. In some cases, like for me, I had to collectively beg the city not to contract out city jobs because city jobs means that that person loses their uh, money coming in, uh, their family, their benefits, their insurance, all the things that each of us had or would have liked to have at a job that we had in the lifetime that we've lived. So collective bargaining in this case is being used as a way to punish. And I believe I know the person responsible, but I'm not gonna mention her name, uh, who raised a lot of money and gave a lot of money to this organization to do this. Uh, they would not, not have been able to raise that kind of money on their own. And yet they did raise enough money to go out there and get all the signatures and attack the police department, the police union in this particular case. Oftentimes labor stands up for labor. In this case, we decided this campaign needed to be a forceful campaign because it is built on lies, <coughs> built on suppositions. It is built by money that nobody knows where it came from and money that is going against an organization that if they come after them, they come after us. I will be glad to answer any questions and I'm sure my other union brothers and, and sisters that may be on here and part of this organization, which by the way, send me, send me. I wanna sign up. I wanna be a member of your group because you're the first one who has done that. The Bear County Democratic Party has not passed our resolution to support the union. The, uh, the president has put out a pro-care act which says let people unionize, let people collectively bargain, let people stand up for their rights, for their members and for the benefits that they can receive and the rights to bargain collectively on workers' issues, on, on, on the kind of salaries that they get. And yet we are still waiting for the Bear County Democratic Party to be with us on this issue. But we thank you, Northeast, for doing this for us, for letting us speak out. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, I will be more than glad to carry them to the people who are unfortunately having to fight this fight. I do wanna thank the firefighters because the firefighters have done a tremendous job in letting the public know how this is going to hurt not only the police, but hopefully not them either. And we're standing strong for them. They are part of the AFL-CIO. We have received monies for this campaign from the national AFL-CIO for many of our unions because they say they go after one, they go after all. So thank you so much for the invitation and I will be more than glad to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Uh, we have a, uh, Ian Strauss has his hand up. Ian? Yes. Okay. Ms. Chavez Thompson, um, I'm not sure whether or not you are arguing that the abuses 
cited by the Fix SAPD campaign are real or unreal. Um, however, I'll assume that, that you'll grant that they're real. Would you kindly give us a different way forward to addressing the, the abuses and problems that is the, the evident inability to discipline uh, police who abuse their extremely powerful uh, powers as officers of the law? I don't know that I can give you that answer, but when you sit down at contract negotiations, that has to be done by the police chief and his negotiators. If there are those kind of problems, and I'm sure there are, uh, I can't pinpoint how many or, or who, but if those kind of problems are there, they have to fix them. They have to fix them. They have to make sure that when you go to arbitration, that it isn't just a one-sided arbitration. It has to be both sides have to represent their, their issues, but it, it has to be in a written rule that goes into the collective bargaining agreement. It has to be written in there so that it can be applied and it can be, um, how shall, my, my, my words are, are, are getting lost here. In other words, implement the rule and implement it to the people who are not abiding by it. Thank you, Bob Como. So the Central Labor Council had a very, very lively discussion for about an hour and a half with members of Fix SAPD. And they are very, very articulate, very, very passionate. And we can certainly understand that because while I've been in the labor movement for 49 years, prior to that, I was involved in the civil rights movement and continue to be. Uh, so some of the issues that they raised are very, very legitimate. The resolution that the San Antonio AFL-CIO passed very, very clearly states our support for the, for the um, reforms that are called for by the Black Lives Movement, uh, ma uh, the issues that are supported by them. But it also says do it at the bargaining table and don't take away collective bargaining rights because we support collective bargaining rights for everybody. Now, in the... Um, I, I like the position that has been taken by a couple of candidates running for city council, and that is uh, they're the ultimate authority. Uh, they're the ones who have to vote on the contract. And uh, like Ezra Johnson says, he will not vote for any contract that doesn't have the reforms in them. What the petitions have accomplished, I think, is given a little bit of spine to the negotiators for the city because they now have something that says, hey, there's a su substantial number of people who support this. But what's on the ballot is collective bargaining. You know, it's not, it's not Derek Chauvin or things like that. I had a conversation by, by uh, Facebook the other day with one of our relatively new labor leaders and a lot of the new folks don't understand where we're coming from because he, he passed on something that he had been given that basically says, why are we wasting all this time in court uh, on this thing? Everybody in the world saw the murder of George Floyd. And I said, I pray that he is found guilty. I trust that the system will work, but I certainly do not want to sacrifice our due process rights because those due process rights came at a price that many of us, many of our forebears paid years ago. And I don't want to sacrifice that right, just as I don't want to sacrifice uh, collective bargaining rights for anybody at the state. And that's why I have already voted against Proposition B. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Sandy Thompson. The, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Bob, I'm, I'm first. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, I, Ms. Chavez Thompson, you mentioned that um, the Fix SAPD uh, was, uh, they were they were lying about something. And I'm, I'm not really not on e you know, either side of this. I, I'm really um, confused about it. And that's why I asked 
for you to, um, you were my choice for speaker, is that I, I didn't understand what you meant because I haven't really heard them lie and I don't really know that much about it. Uh, but I, I tell you what I have seen is that um, the, there are some, um, some anti, you know, prop A, I think it is, uh, uh, that are saying that, that this is just for defunding uh, defunding the police, and that's, that's definitely B. not true. Okay, so could you just tell me what uh, what sort of lies that uh, that the fix I say PD are are dispelling to everybody? Oh, I, I didn't say they were lying. They're just not able to understand what collective bargaining is. They're comparing it to meet and confer, and meet and confer is just sitting down. Management tells you what they want and don't want, and then you go away. And, and it, is, it is not a binding contract. Collective bargaining is a contract that you sign that these are the things that you're going to do. So I, I, I don't know where they got their information. They are not clearly knowing that by taking away collective bargaining rights from the, this uh, group of people is denying them the ability to sit down with management and sign a contract that says, yes, we will do this, or no, we will not do that. Uh, they don't understand collective bargaining rights for public employees. It is a, a or, or for any employee, any, any uh, union that collectively bargains for their members, whether it be plumbers, pipe, pipe fitters, iron workers, which every union is sitting down with their contractor to negotiate their wages and their working conditions. Uh, they do not understand that. They went after uh, Right, rights issues versus workers' issues. I see. Um, wow. Just a little follow up on that. Um, uh, so your uh, your solution. I think you were mentioning that you thought there was a solution to this, and that was changing or or um, um, uh, amending what their their. Uh, contract or their rules or the association rules or how, how could we possibly get um, some reform um, on the side uh, that we need? My understanding is that the, the current negotiations that are going on with the police department and with the union are clearly being heard by those people sitting down at the table as, as we speak, maybe not today, but as we speak, they are sitting down they know why proposition, this proposition was brought forth. Mm -hmm. So if they don't sit down and they don't work out between them, we've got to do something about these problems with the arbitration and that some officers that should not come back still keep coming back. And what are we going to do about it? So that, and that also then eventually falls on the city council because that contract is going to come to them. So we are also working to make sure that the right people get into city council and that the right things are being done, not just for the police, but for the people that they administer to, the people that they owe their jobs to, and that's us. So they have to be accountable as well. And the way to do it is through the collective bargaining process, sitting down, negotiating the contract, and the police department has to make sure that the people are being served as well as the union is being served. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate thank you. you. Bob Salvatore is next. Bob, come on. The other night, oh, and, okay, now you hear me. I listened yeah. to the debate the other night, and um, I was confused as to what they wanted. What does Fix SA want? <laughs> and I, I figured there's three things. Uh, they want to get rid of collective bargaining for whatever purpose because getting rid of collective bargaining does not get rid of a dozen or so bad cops. It doesn't do that. It just removes their right to collectively bargain. And then it does what, then maybe it'll, they'll get meet and confer. The other thing they want to get rid of is binding, binding arbitration. Binding arbitration is the way you do business today. If you've got a, a Verizon contract or a Spectrum contract or a warranty on anything, it spells out binding arbitration. And both sides pick and choose and scratch off the arbitrators they don't want. So both sides, the city, 
and the and the uh, SAPO actually get to decide who's going to be the arbitrator. Not me, not the not the mayor, not city council. They do it themselves. The third thing I got was that they want the citizen control action committee. It, it's it's very vague as to what it's supposed to do, but they want the control. I'm guessing. They want to control every decision that's made on policy for the police department, which is why we elected a city council. If we don't have a city council. If we didn't elect them to make decisions for us, why are they there? So, so the other thing that raises, uh, and, and someone asked the question during the debate, but they gave no response. Who are these anonymous donors? And don't they have some sort of, I assume they're political action committee. Don't they have to make a report and put these people down? Because I, I made reports for political action committee. I could never put down anonymous donor. That didn't fly. So what I'm thinking is getting rid of collective bargaining solves no problem that they say they've got. Yes, there is a problem with uh, a dozen or so bad cops who should have never been cops. Um, but, I, but what I want to hear is who's going to review the training the police department has and make strong recommendations to improve it? Who's going to review the selection process that cops are supposed to go through and make changes to that? Who's going to review the testing process they go through? These are the things that's going to give us good cops in the future versus some guys that get through the cracks who are, are making it bad for everybody, uh, which, will, which will spread over to the fire department too, eventually. So I, I'm, I'm going to vote no to this thing because it's too big. Uh, it doesn't solve their problem. They want to get rid of these bad cops. I do too. But this does not do that. Uh, they say they get rid of 173, 174, and then 143 will kick in. Andy, Andy uh, the city attorney, said, no, it doesn't. So the, the facts are vague here, and the solution to reach their goal, I don't see them being, being, being accomplished here, other than this uh, citizen control committee that I'm, I'm kind of curious what that's supposed to look like. Thank you. Uh, Joan, you're next. I'm you. Um, uh, Bob just kind of asked the question that I was going to ask. The one thing that I, one issue that kind of came up in that debate was um, citizens having a seat at the table and citizens um, somehow being put into this process. And I'm thinking, when does that ever happen under any circumstance? If this, if this proposition passes, are we suddenly going to have our seat at the I don't think so. I, I, I'm a retired state employee and I don't see us having a whole lot of influence except through our elected you know, representatives as to what's going on in Austin or what's going on in Washington or what's going on at city council. We, we can only work with the people who we elect and that's where we need to you know, put our or, and and so my question to Linda is just, you know, is there something that I'm missing here or that this proposition is somehow going to allow uh, citizens to quote unquote, have a seat at the table? My understanding is it does not. <laughs> so there's no way to put, there is a citizens advisory committee that is supposed to be uh, monitoring, but I'm not aware that just any citizen can walk up and say, I want to be part of the negotiations. <laughs> no. no. Okay, uh, Tony Blasi and then Rudy Morales. Yes, um, I want to reiterate the fact that if there were no collective bargaining, it would still be possible for wayward police officers to use chokeholds, uh, resort to firearms without uh, the necessity of doing so, even feed uh, feces in, in a sandwich to the homeless. It, the solution simply doesn't address problems that are there. 
I would also say that it would create problems in the future that are not there now. I begged for employees rather than bargained for a number of years in the state of Tennessee uh, as the uh, uh, state conference president of the American Association of University Professors. For some strange reason, the public hates university professors more than they hate police. But uh, we, we had to go to uh, usually the, the bureaucracy as opposed to the legislature. We, could, we were able to get more traction with uh, uh, the governor's uh, person on education. And when we could not come to an agreement behind closed doors, you know, there's collective bargaining, but with officials rather than delegates, um, things ended up in the courts or in the press. And I used that routinely. Um, the, you know, university officials were usually sufficiently incompetent that we were able to find mistakes and go to court. Uh, we were able to find embarrassing information and go to the press. And I can just say there would be a lot less problems if people did not have to do that. Uh, whereas collective bargaining is a much more um, civil way of uh, proceeding. Uh, according to the San Antonio report, I no longer get the express news for technical reasons. They were sending blank pages and they complained and they their solution was to give me a year's free subscription to the blank pages. So I, I go to the San Antonio report. And according to the San Antonio report, I, and I've been following this uh, closely there, um, the negotiations are very close. The two positions are very close at the present time. The um, Police Officers Association has agreed um, you know, to, to give in on, on some of the, uh, the items uh, not using the background on the officer. They said, okay, you can use that. You know, yeah, you don't have to get the evidence uh, within a month, I think it is. You know, they said, okay, we'll, we'll agree on that. The last sticking point is the ability of an arbitrator to reverse a decision of the police chief. And there, I think the police officers associations have a good point. I don't know why the city, you know, isn't uh, um, agreeing with them there. What's the point of arbitration if, if a preliminary decision cannot be reversed? Uh, so they're down to that one sticking point. The, the issues are being addressed in negotiations, which is where they should be addressed. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Rudy Morales. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Salvatore pretty much said a lot of stuff I wanted to say. Uh, he said it very well. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions as far as what is collective bargaining. You know, I've, I've watched numerous presentations by Fix SAPD and, and, you know, everybody's, well, they're lying, this and that. I, I don't know about lying. They're putting facts out there that it's just not accurate. Uh, for example, the other night on KSAT, they gave out that Washington Post thing of 70% uh, of police off, fire police officers get their job back. And there's like a dozen in the last 10 years or something like that. I don't know the exact figure, but it's clearly not 70%. So uh, there's a lot, you know, people are trying to win a campaign here and a lot of things are being said and a lot of uh, muddying of the waters is being done. Uh, when police cry out, defund the police, uh, they don't like to hear that, but they love, they love to use uh, sister cities like Austin. Uh, they defunded their, their budget by several millions of dollars. And now they're trying to recoup some of that. But yes, there is, there is a, a form of defunding that goes on. Uh, it is a repeal on collective bargaining. They don't even like to hear that. They wanna hear a police accountability. It's to take collective bargaining away, folks. And uh, I've worked under that for 36 years. Uh, I can't imagine not having collective bargaining with the dangerous jobs that we do. Uh, there has to be some safeguards. Uh, I, I, I would not want to be a police officer. It's a very hard job to do, and, and I'm not really defending them. I'm about collective bargaining. Uh, but a lot of this uh, stuff that happens on the news, uh, you know, some of these news agencies are leaning one way. Uh, it's clear to me, and, you know, a lot of these people contributing the money, I know who they are. They, they've tried to bust unions for years. We, we were in a fight with one for forever. So anyway, I, I just 
if I, if you all have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to answer. Uh, thanks for the time. I'm voting against the repeal. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any uh, more hands raised. Um, uh, Lynn, did you have some final remarks? I just want to thank you all for listening. Uh, I, I see that all of you are interested in it. There are even things that I don't understand. And I've been at this, uh, I beat you by a few years. Uh, I've got 53 years in the labor movement, okay? And of course I look young. Uh, I was a yes. child when I started. <laughs> Absolutely. But those 53 years, for 27 of those years, I collectively begged. Uh, I was known as the mouth of the South. I was called a lot of other names that I won't mention here today either. But the media was the only way that we could even make a dent into the city council voting for something for us. At one point, it, it was almost like I wanted to go home and just quit. And the next morning I say, like hell, I'm gonna quit. And I would come after mayors and city council people and what have you. I, in fact, I asked Mayor Nelson, I mean, County Judge Nelson, I said, did I ever yell at you? He says, yeah, quite a few times. He says, but, uh, but you made sense. And, and this makes no sense. This issue makes no sense. Who then, if we take away the collective bargaining and these officers are gonna find someplace else to go, who's going to protect San Antonio afterwards? And this is, this is happening. Uh, this is not just happening here. It's happening all over the country. All over the country, this is happening. And it's a sad situation where police officers are leaving because they're being denied their own rights to protect us. And they're supposed to protect us and they do protect us. The bad ones, bad, but not the good ones. The good ones that are out there protecting San Antonio do not deserve this. We're asking everyone to vote no on this proposition because it is against human and worker rights decency. This is our fight. It is our fight, not just as union leaders or past union leaders or, or sit, uh, this is our right as citizens of this city to be protected by a police union that has a right to protect themselves and their union members on the job because their job is to protect us. Thank you so much for allowing me and my other brothers and sisters in the union here to make ourselves heard. And thank you for the organization that you have built and the organization that you represent so well. And I demand to be a member. So somebody get me a card and I will sign up uh, as soon as I can. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you very much, uh, Linda Tabitha Soundsman for coming out and speaking to us about um, a collective bargaining this morning. And We'll, we'll get that uh, information over to you full taste. Thank you. Um, may I uh, comment here? Uh, Linda, there's a couple of questions in the chat that um, we didn't get to, uh, uh, but okay. I wasn't sure whether or not they were, you know, uh, part of this conversation, but if you would address them, stay in the meeting. I'm going to put the link in the, uh, in the chat for you. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the most computer literate person in the world. Okay, so <laughs> if somebody. You, me oh, do you have the chat box open? Do you want to open that up so that you can see uh, on the right hand side of your screen uh, the, all the participants? On the bottom of your, your of your screen, there's a yeah. thing that says chat, and then it will open up the chat box. I did that. Right well, I've got a whole bunch of thank you, Linda's on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, just keep scrolling around there and you can answer them in the chat. And then I'm going to put the, the link to membership in this in the chat also. So you can click on that and it'll open up to our ACLU account. Thank you so much for attending. I, I really mm -hmm. appreciate you. M Mr. Chair, I, I believe Al Kissling has a question. Uh, sure, Al. Unmute yourself. You're muted, Al. Al, unmute yourself. Al, unmute yourself. Reach over on your screen and unmute. There you are. Okay. All right. Now. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I apologize for coming in late. I, the link got lost on my computer and I had to get somebody to send it to me anew. Um, I happen to be voting 
uh, yes on Proposition B, and I just wanted to state my case. I'm a union member from early on. I haven't been recently, but uh, as I understand the situation, there is currently no accountability. And I don't hear any of the three speakers I did hear talking about how the police are being held accountable. Uh, and when they talk about citizen review board, as I understand the current one, uh, it's appointed by the police uh, and the county commission, I believe, or somebody. Uh, and the uh, police chief has the right to uh, uh, veto anything that they decide. It's not really giving uh, citizenry a, an expression of concern. And my concern was to have the thing rewritten. And I, what I understand is voting yes on Proposition B will eliminate the existing and set up for a renewal of a new relationship or a new, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, uh, pro collective bargaining. No, but it, it but will not. But they have to pass Proposition B in order to be able to do something new. And there's no, no question in my mind that we need something new. That's where I am. Okay, well, I respect, but don't agree with your, with your comments. They take away collective bargaining, it's gone. There's no- I don't want to take away collective bargaining. I just wanted the new, uh, there is no participation by the citizenry in the current situation. Uh, there is a citizens review board. Uh, I believe Which there was- Which uh, Well, uh, uh, no. The, their, uh, it is gone. I mean, collective bargaining will be gone and there will be no negotiations between fire and police. Uh, their, their, their rights will be taken immediately away and there will be no way to come back and set up another process. And, and that's all I can tell you. Yeah, Bob. Okay, I think Rudy wants, excuse me, uh, Rudy had raised his hand. Yeah, I just like to say there is there is a board right now that the chief at his discretion can call on at any time. He doesn't have to use them. But uh, the thing with citizens, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of emotion going on right now. So there has to be some safeguards. And I and I and I think Chief McManus, who's a supportive collective bargaining, uh, agrees that everything should be done at the table. Uh, as far as accountability, they are they are actively working on that right now. Uh, but the way they're, the, to remove collective bargaining wipes out everything. Uh, I work directly under collective bargaining too. Uh, so the 99% of the police force that everybody loves, they work under collective bargaining too. And to use these scorched earth tactics, it's just not the answer. Uh, but yes, accountability is very, very important. And I'm for reform too. They've got to change some things. Okay. Bob Salvador, Salvatore. Um, yeah, to answer your question, um, two, two things you brought up. Collective bargaining, once it's eliminated, they would have to get a petition and redo a referendum and have the voters vote it back in again, which is a long drawn out process in the, in the and the forces against collective bargaining in this community are much greater than those who are for it, as you all know, as a former union member. The other thing is what is actually happening. You have uh, the three issues that they're talking about at the table. And as of uh, the other night, when Andy Scobie, the uh, attorney for the city, uh, stated that they had made good progress. They're not there yet, but they're making progress. So that addresses the accountability issue that you raised. They are being accountable, and that's where it's done. It's done at the negotiating table. Once you eliminate collective bargaining, you don't have it again until it's voted in. This uh, impression that they tried to give that this Section 143 meet and confer uh, doesn't kick in. It's not an automatic thing. Again, you got to go to the voters. City Council, and, and it's a process that where people will go without being represented. What I think some people would like is to have the police and fire 
on, as at-will employees. That's what it appears to me. And as as someone who's been an at-will employee, uh, I can tell you it's not fun, not in this state. So think about what I said that you don't you don't change nothing with these 10, 11, a dozen bad guys out there because we can remember they still going to be protected by civil service and they can still come back and sue the hell out of the city if they want. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and again, I want to, I, I do appreciate the uh, interventions by all of the uh, union members and former union members of the case of VI. Myself, I'm a former member union, uh, member of, 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 of a union for the, for the Foreign Service of the United States. And uh, I, I myself very much uh, support collective bargaining. I uh, believe that uh, eliminating is not going to solve anything, but hey, that's just my opinion. Uh, well, we, we will move on at the present time. Thank you so very much uh, for all of those who participated in this very useful uh, discussion. And thank you, Linda Chavez Thompson, for having joined us this morning. And we do welcome you to be our, a member of, of our club. The, uh, the link is in the chat box. Uh, just to click right. on it and you <laughs> thank will you. Thank go, you. go right to where you can join up. Okay, uh, the next item on our agenda uh, is the approval of the minutes of the March 13th, uh, 2021 meeting. Uh, let me do a share screen if I can find the minutes and share them with you. Okay, I did send these out to you uh, yesterday and uh, uh, they were sent to you previously. Uh, uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Is there a motion so to moved. approve? Okay, is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the meeting of March 13th. Are there any corrections or additions? Any corrections or additions? Okay, there being no corrections or additions. All those in favor of approval of the minutes, uh, raise your hands um, or, um, or or click the yes button. If you don't like it, you don't need to click the no button. Okay. Uh, the minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the treasurer's report. Is Brian here? I didn't see him. Brian? Brian is not here. Okay. Um, I will. Well, we have a, money, right? We have some money, yes. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just, I, I, I called up the account on my phone here. Uh, we have a total of $32,593.00. Uh, 37 cents in the uh, NEBCD account at this time. Um, and we, uh, uh, of course, the, the big contribution to that, that number uh, was uh, laughing liberally, um, which contributed, uh, I believe, a net of $10,000 or so. I, I keep having a problem coming up with the exact number, but. Um, it was a very successful event. And we've had a, uh, ongoing contributions of, of people renewing their uh, membership. Um, and um, so, and we have, we've not had any major outlays uh, in, in the recent past. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, the next item is the chair's report and uh, Zach isn't here and I don't have anything to, to add to what what's gone on so far this morning. So we'll get the committee report. Uh, budget and finance, uh, well, that's, that's me again. <laughs> and uh, uh, our finances are in healthy, healthy good shape. Um, and uh, looks like we will be uh, building up to the level that we will need to uh, be at in order to have a campaign office in 2022. Um, and uh, when we're going to have great Democratic victories here in Bexar County and in the state of Texas, I hope. All right, uh, campaign and candidate recruitment. Uh, I am and Tony. Sure. 
Tony, you here? Tony's oh, there. Ah, well. Don't have an awful lot to report. I know we, we briefly discussed uh, Senatorial District 25 and, and getting in some sort of early candidate forum. Haven't done anything more on that. Um, and I, I know Cold Osborne is uh, talking, wants to talk to us about uh, texting effort and the, uh, the city council campaigns. And I, I believe we need to, Bob and Tony and I need to find a, a meeting time with him. That's about all. Is Colton, okay. is Colton the meeting? No, Colton's out uh, block walking for, for John <laughs> Courage this morning. Uh, and so he, he couldn't be with us uh, this morning. Uh, but I just wanted to add that um, we have spent a few dollars on a, a small texting campaign already, $42 uh, mm -hmm. so far, um, for uh, trying to develop additional uh, um, volunteers for our, our campaign efforts. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, and the Bear County Democratic Party uh, budget, which I've been working on over the course of the past week, uh, will uh, be making an effort uh, to have a, a pretty pretty large outlays, um, which will be dependent on, of course, uh, matching income uh, for the uh, uh, gubernatorial and other state uh, uh, office uh, campaign in 2022, uh, and of course to support uh, the many judicial and uh, legislative. Uh, um, Positions that will be uh, up for election in, in that year, so um, we'll be getting getting back to that uh, later on. <clears throat> okay, uh, communications, Sandy. Well, uh, uh, Martha and I are diligently, uh, you know, working and trying to um, to, you know. Get, Piece together, you know, transfer over the old um, uh, website to the new, which is not live yet. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't been in touch. We had, we, we got sick uh, over the weekend, last weekend. So we were, you know, we're not on the ball 100%, but uh, we're getting back together with it. And we're going to have a resources page and I'm not sure whether or not um, with with all the, you know, uh, the different groups that we're affiliated with or that um, that are our focus on uh, of, uh, democracy. And um, I'm not sure whether or not it's going to be a private page where you you um, you have to register to get in there or not. Couldn't say might just leave it open for everybody. But. Uh, we're we're still doing that. We did a soft rollout of the uh, the new logo, and I'll show it to you right now. It's uh, I'm not going to share it because <laughs> for some reason this um, this is it right here. Okay, so we've got the old logo on the top and the new logo on the bottom. I'd like to everybody to make a note of that that we are going to change the logo. And uh, please be aware when you see these um, emails or invitations or on our Facebook or YouTube, that is what it's going to look like. Uh, we've we've all you know uh, been through meetings, several meetings about uh, the change, and this is the look that we decided on. I hope everybody likes it. We can't see it, uh, Sandra. Well, it's me. Um Oh, okay. I got it now. Okay. Okay. Whenever I talk, that's <laughs> you'll see it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. I thought it was okay. a sc screen share. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, let, let me share the the screen share of the minutes again. And. Up there at the top, that's the new logo. Yeah, so okay. it's we're going to have it for 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 all of our documents. Uh, we're we're 
you know, we, we're, we've been promised that uh, we're going to have a, a packet that will allow us to, uh, to do all kinds of things with the, um, with that logo. We've okay. already sent the thank you card out to all our la laughing liberally donors with the new logo on the thank you card. Yes, I, I, I did see that. Uh, it was off center, but that's okay. Uh, it looked good. It looked nice real card. good. And um, Martha, do you have anything to share? I do. Um, you know, Sandra mentioned that uh, we've been working on a resource page, and she's also talking about uh, migrating uh, current information from the website to the new website. But this is an opportunity for members to give us input about what they think would make the website useful. And that's our intent is to provide current information, uh, resource information, other things that would make people want to use the website. <laughs> so if you've had some thoughts in the past about, I wish there was one place I could go to find out, fill in the blank, uh, and you think it would fit on the website, tell us now, uh, because we have a, a team of, um, who are, who are building frames for these pages so that they'll be very efficient and we can fill them in and update them easily. Sandy and I are responsible for content. So that means we decide what we keep from the current website and what we uh, delete because it's uh, not useful or because it's not presented in a way that, uh, that would be uh, of most use to the people, uh, the members who come to the website. So I'd really appreciate if you would email any input you have, take a look at the website as we have it now and provide any input that you have about how we can make it useful for you. And uh, Martha and I will put our uh, emails in the chat box here, but we also have our emails on the, web, the website as well under members or what was it, under our leadership. Uh, so I'll do that right now, Martha, you can do it. And then um, anybody wants to um, copy our email addresses, um, they can look at the website and send us some feedback. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, I noticed in the chat that there is a remark that I sure would like to see pros and cons on propositions uh, on, on the propositions on our website. So uh, communications you might want to think think about uh, well, some of, some uh, of prosing, uh, someone is else, else is going to have to make that and no 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 I, I on there. <laughs> no 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 do not make us the do that the party no. the party the party office has um Le league of women voter pamphlets and they have some pros and cons in that okay all right and uh, since you weren't here for the you know conversation on uh, um we probably want to add some things, you know, from what we learned today. Uh, certainly every time that we, that I come to an event where we're talking about this very thing, uh, I learn more and more information. It's so been so helpful. I went to the uh, NAACP uh, meeting where they had Joan and the, the Black Officer Association, Black uh, Police Officer Association, um, everybody was there and uh, uh, Fix SAPD was there and that it was a, a really good conversation. Unfortunately, it was Zoom bombed. Uh, there was some nasty person who was coming on there telling, saying awful things uh, and disrupting, but it was a great conversation, but uh, there were just questions uh, that I had that I thought was important for us all to to uh, to come back to since we had had a uh, fix SAPD twice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, before we go any further, I just wanted to acknowledge the presence of uh, Judge Rosie Stephen Gonzalez, who uh, I, I didn't see early on. Uh, Judge uh, Gonzalez, are you there? Did you go away? Well, Look, I'm here. I'm oh, here. here. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. And uh, it's been an interesting meeting. You know, we as judges uh, don't get into those kind of conversations, but we certainly hear them. Um, I think it, it's, a, it's a highly charged issue. Um, mm -hmm. 
can be considered divisive, <laughs> but information is best to be posted, I agree, so that the public can make an informed decision on the issues. Uh, I would like to inform you all that I did file my JCTA form at the election office on April 6th. That was my 56th birthday. And uh, we have campaigned for the 2022 primary as well as hopefully the uh, big dance, the election in November. So uh, your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and we you. appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, there was a, uh, a question in here in the chat about Proposition A. Um, I think it, it has something to do with um, um, homeless housing. Um, it's a it's a yeah, housing it, 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 it it is dealing with um, city finance uh, for housing and so on. Uh, and it's it seems to be pretty innocuous. I, I voted for it. I I might add. I by mail a week ago. So, uh, yeah, it, it expands the use of bond funds to include housing. Right. And, uh, you know, that's really something that we're, we're going to have to trust our city council to, uh, to address. And um, that I think they feel powerless. At, and, you know, I think we get, they probably get a lot of complaints about the homeless. I noticed that in every single district, there is a a conversation on, I can't remember if it was um, next door, <laughs> the, the website next door, but there's a, there's a conversation in every single district about homeless. And I, I just can't believe we have that many homeless people here. Mm. Yeah, I, I, in uh, the next door version that uh, comes to, uh, to me, uh, I had never realized there were so many homeless people on Thousand Oaks uh, Drive. Uh, it's amazing. And they're, they're just kind of invisible, uh, but they're there. They're there. Okay. Uh, Como, did you have something you wanted to share with us or Bob Como? No. Okay. You don't, okay. Thank you. You got your hand up, Bob. So I'm, I'm going to put lower your hand. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so moving on. Uh, I think Joe was raising his hand. Pardon me? Joe Gonzalez is raising his hand. Oh, oh Joe, uh, fire away. Thank you. I just wanted, I feel compelled to make a comment about the homeless because this has been a recurrent issue in our office. Uh, and I agree that the perception is that we're seeing an influx uh, of homeless um, here in, in San Antonio and in Bear County generally. I don't know whether or not, whether it's because of the weather, I don't know what the factors are but, uh, but I continue to hear reports that, uh, that the DA's office, that, that officers show up and, and do not arrest the homeless at a call because it, the DA, and they have mentioned be my name, that I refuse to prosecute the homeless. That is not true. We have, we have accepted cases where, there are, where crimes occur. What I've said and I'll continue to say is you cannot criminalize the homeless. If somebody wants somebody arrested because they're sleeping on, on a sidewalk or in a park ranch, mm -hmm. that, that's not right, right? You shouldn't throw somebody in jail because they can't find a place to sleep. I promise you that we have accepted cases. If a, a member of the homeless population assaults you, punches any one of you, pulls a knife on you, destroys your property, we, we have and we will continue to prosecute those cases. So if anybody says, look, you know, we don't, we can't arrest these people because Joe Gonzalez doesn't prosecute those kinds of crimes. That's not true. But, but again, it's not right to arrest people just because they don't have a place to live. And, and I'll say that every day, all day long. And I just wanted to clarify that. Just proof. Very good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, uh, events and fundraising. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm unmuted. So uh, the events and fundraising committee exceeded our expectations this year and uh, for NEBCD laughing liberally. Uh, we're grateful to our sponsors who work together with us to support our work, defraying our costs and raising funds for our club. Uh, we will be meeting again next month. If you're interested in working on our committee, please go to the website and contact us. 
Aggie Park will not be available this year for Labor Day picnic. Uh, so if you have any ideas for a venue for a similar event, you know, Labor Day, um, please contact me by going on the website and finding me or any, anybody on the committees. Uh, that's what, so let's see, um, repeat number three. Uh, we will not be, we will be meeting next month if you're interested in working on our committee. Okay. <laughs> what, what day will you be meeting, uh, Anne? Uh, the set, I think it's the seventh, it's the first Thursday in May. A question, <clears throat> I had a question about, um, uh, can anybody tell me after the event, how many donations came in after the 18th? Because I, I, um, I continue to broadcast the program on both Facebook and, uh, and YouTube. We sent out an additional uh, invitation to watch um, a week later. And I was just curious if we received any additional um, donations after the 18th. Yeah, I need to, we did get some, but I had, I'd have to go to Act Blue and, and see that. Okay. They right. were pretty minimal. I've been uh, monitoring Act Blue. Um, okay. But it, 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 there were some uh, donations, at, you know, after the event. Yeah. And uh, they were in the $20 range. Is that what yeah. we're talking about? Thereabouts. Okay. Generally. Uh, okay, what was my other? Oh, I was so shocked to find out that we're not going to get to, to be there for Ad Aggie Park. Now, why? What was the reasoning? Did they get both? They're still in reconstruction. the construction. Reconstruction. Okay. Yeah, they had, they had deferred the reconstruction uh, that they were going to do uh, last year because of COVID. And uh, now they're, they're going to undertake it, and it will be uh, out, of, out of service. At, at, in September, unfortunately. Yes, I know. I, I was having these dreams of <laughs> how our event was going to look. <laughs> yeah. I wonder wonder if we should consider and think about it's half in and half out, but uh, the FW78 downtown. We've been there before. Yeah, that's yeah, and they, that do before. Have, they do have an air conditioned space, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that will happen outside and eat. So. Do, do they do they have access or as uh, some way to for on the river walk oh yeah, yeah. they got, yeah, they got a, a and access immediately yeah can and that would can be a draw. have a, mm -hmm. you know uh we can we extend out to the river walk too no no you can't no. go out to the river walk it's they have to go upstairs to get to uh oh, okay all right mm -hmm. I, I think here i've got an idea i'm sorry martha why don't we why don't we rent all of the boats? <laughs> rent all the boats and have a party. <laughs> that would be a little expensive, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. And Martha, did you have something to say? Um, <clears throat> going back to the VFW post, they have a very large patio out to the side of it. Mm -hmm. We've done, we've done the, uh, the stage. Yeah, before. we've been there before. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Years so, ago. so you're not. So you're right at the, the river and it's very pleasant to sit out there drinking beer, I can tell you. <laughs> well, you know, that's so what I'm doing is I'm making a list, you know, to discuss so we can open our discussion on in May, you know. So uh, if you if anybody here, you know, I'd love to hear from anybody and then we can discuss all the options that I get. Yeah, we've also used in the past a VFW post that's on Austin Highway. I can't remember the Oh, right. Jim, Jim Lucas is VFW. Jim, Lucas is, Jim uh, are you is, here? Yeah. Oh, I don't think Jim is with us this morning. No. Okay. I didn't see him. Uh, um, okay. And that would be entirely inside. That, that's, yes. that's, and it has a kitchen. So I forgot about that. Yeah. Where's that located? It's on Austin Highway, oh, okay. just inside okay. the loop. 2222 okay. Austin Highway. Okay. Yeah, it would be an entirely inside event and it does have a kitchen. Okay. Where well, we had a kitchen fire, I remember uh, <laughs> one time. <laughs> that we did. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but it was minor it, it, and put out quite quickly, but uh, it didn't happen. Okay. 
government action and monitoring. I, well, Martha, you're still up for that. Uh, we haven't yeah. found a con have you found a substitute for yourself, Martha? Well, I'm trying to talk Al Kissling into doing it. I may be making some progress. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I, if, you know, there are so many things going on that trouble us and feel urgent, and then we have to pay attention to them now. Right. It's a long time. Uh, but I would say if you're going to pick I'll one. I'll be glad to shuck the corn again, but that's about it. Say that again, Al? I'll be glad to shuck the corn if we can have that good corn again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. Uh, you know, I, I would say right now, if <clears throat> if you had to pick one issue, and of course, we're not going to, none of us is going to do one issue, but if there's one that you really, really need to pay attention to, to the end of the year, it's redistricting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. I've, I've been working fairly closely with an organization called All in the Line, uh, oh. which is uh, focused nationwide, but I'm working with the state organization focused on uh, keeping an eye on what's going on with the uh, with redistricting and engaging with what's going on in redistricting. And starting in May, it, it, all on the line will be organizing uh, local and regional accountability teams. And the idea is that at each uh, local or regional area, there will be a team of people who've committed themselves to track what's going on and to react to it. It could be that it will be up somewhere between October and December before the redistricting is done. Normally it's you know, done during the legislature, but because of the delay in the census, uh, it will come up later, which is good for us. Uh, we have time to work on this. And uh, you know, as Bob pointed out earlier, maybe the, the chief merit of FIX SAPD um, is that it made uh, politicians, government leaders, recognize that there are groups of people who are focused on these on an issue, and they want some change. So I think this is a, a tremendous opportunity and actually a, a tremendous responsibility that all of us have uh, to try to do something about what happens in redistricting. Uh, even if you feel kind of hopeless about Republicans and say, ah, they're not going to do anything. That doesn't remove our responsibility to try to make them do something. We exactly. can't just stand by. Um, and even, uh, you know, even providing testimony becomes part of a legal record uh, in the state that helps, uh, if not make them accountable, at least it stands as a record about what we in, the, in this state want. So if any of you are interested in participating in an accountability team, um, I'll write my email here. I'll connect you with the state. We might also talk about how we organize our own accountability team. We'll be doing, you know, moving toward that in May. Thank you, Martha. I am up for that, Martha. You may put I, me on your team. I have a question. It's, I understand it. The census data is not going to come out till September and maybe even later. So yes. the actual redistricting is probably not going to happen until January of next year. Is that correct? It yes. could be. Uh, what the uh, the state director for All in the Line is is projecting right now is sometime between October and December. But nobody knows, really knows for sure. And that, in all likelihood, will push our primary to June. I don't know how that will affect the primary. Uh, other than we want to be sure that the Republicans don't find some way to, re uh, to elect more Republicans. So regardless of the timeline, it's something that we need to focus on. I, I recall uh, when Glenn Maxey spoke to us uh, last month that he said something about along the lines that the Republicans may uh, find a way to, to do the redistricting promptly after the uh, census numbers are out. Uh, and and still have the March primary, and they'll just force through uh, the uh, their their uh, gerrymandered redistricting uh, without without any review and without giving us much of an opportunity to challenge it in court, so that the, the primary would be the March would be based on their heavily gerrymandered uh, 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 legislation. Mm -hmm. That that's what I, I've heard. Of you. Uh, well, at any rate, let's move on. Uh, membership, uh, Mabel. 
Yes, um, I posted it just now and uh, we have 301 um, minus 82 who are lapsed for a total of 219. And those of you that are still here, you only get an email from me once a month if to, an, to remind you about the meeting plus that your membership has lapsed. So if you get a, uh, an email from me, that means, oops, I need to renew. And, and that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, please, uh, uh, we're, please keep track of your email. And if you do get a, uh, an email from, from Mabel, it means you, you need to pony up your 20, 20 bucks. It's uh, shouldn't be too burdensome for, for most of us, certainly. Uh, okay, back to Mabel. Uh, yeah. Please organization. Yeah. I will. I want to make a comment. Hey, Frank Archuleta uh, said that uh, in the chat that that uh, VFW eighty five forty one on Austin Highway just recently remodeled. So that's awesome. That's he awesome. Said, yeah. So um, he's he's here in the meeting right now. If you want to uh, talk to uh, talk to him off uh, in the chat, uh, Ann. We okay, need to great. check and see what the you know Maybe. whether it would be available on Labor Day and what the cost would be. Okay. okay. Um, hey, and also somebody somebody else posted the uh, firefighters on IH10, the firefighters hall on IH10. Oh, that's that's yeah, that's it. yeah, that's another good place. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh, nice facility. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, I'm going to um, read what John Goodman. John Goodman is out uh, walk walking for Ezra Johnson uh, this morning. So um, he, he sent an email to me. Hi, Bob. I'm going to miss the meeting tomorrow because I will be walk walking for oh for John Curry. I'm sorry. Here's my very short report. We currently have 301 precinct chairs. Are swearing in 18 new ones at the CEC next week. We currently have 29 coordinators and are swearing in four new ones at the CEC. The upshot is the CEC precinct chair levels are bouncing back quickly. Uh, I, I've been a member of the CEC um, for, since 2000. I can't remember that we ever had that many uh, 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 precinct chairs actually. Um, right. But uh, so uh, John and his crew have done a great job of, of, of building up uh, our um, precinct chair and training. Um, I went through the training course myself uh, uh, a couple few weeks ago, and uh, they they really have Im improved them a lot. Yeah, um, it's it's really uh, uh, that that meeting uh, that two two day weekend is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that was a two day training. Uh, it was amazing, and I loved being able to hear from uh, from from our, uh, our leadership in uh, in uh, the uh, Senate, the, the Texas Senate. That was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was an excellent uh, session. Um, also, we now have six precinct chair training courses. New courses include voter registration, where you can get your VDR certification, voting by mail and two hands-on van courses covering things such as cutting turf and using minivan and creating and managing phone van. And that was uh, John's report. Okay, uh, I am moving on to the next item in the agenda, which is unfinished business. I do not couldn't think of any unfinished business. Uh, new business, uh, support for endorsed city council candidates. And uh, this is just a reminder that uh, uh, we do need to support our city council candidates. Uh, in, 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 in the case of, of the district in which I live, which is nine, uh, John Courage, who was one of the founders of our club uh, and uh, who has been a city council in, in nine now for, for uh, two periods, um, is running for re-election. He's done a great job. He deserves our support. Um, contact uh, uh, Colt uh, Osborne, uh, and he will very happily put you to work uh, for that. And of course, we all already had a, a Ezra Johnson with us this morning, who is uh, running for 
uh, election uh, to be the city councilman. And he certainly, we uh, endorsed him. He certainly deserves our support. So, um, and I think uh, Bob Como probably would be a good good contact for, for that uh, about uh, offering your support to, to Ezra Johnson. Well, I have reached out to Ezra and sent him uh, just before I sent this email out for invitation to ask him if there were any events that he would like me to post on the, on the, I haven't really, I haven't been, he hasn't responded to anything, any emails that I've been sending him. I don't know why. Uh, do you want me to just send them to you, Bob? Uh, you're, you're, you're muted, Bob. Uh, thank you for doing that, Sandra. Appreciate it. And we will respond uh, this week because the event a week from tomorrow night on, on uh, Sunday the 18th at 6.30 p.m., it'll be a Zoom presentation and it'll be uh, a good old-fashioned rally. And there'll be some, some good music and some politicking and I think everybody's going to enjoy it. And uh, I think it's a really good opportunity. It is a, it is a Zoom type fundraiser. Um, you know, unfortunately, several minor candidates got in the race. I don't deny anybody their right to run, but in a situation where you're running against the most conservative council member uh, and it, the, the, the minor candidates may get just enough votes to throw it into a runoff, meaning about a $50,000 uh, expenditure over the next month uh, is challenging. So we're going to have to be prepared for it. Uh, uh, the incumbent was able to sit on his stash of money without having to spend a lot. Uh, and so we have a lot of catch up to do. So I hope that people will be generous. You all know what it costs to, to run campaigns and to do what we're doing. Uh, I know that, uh, that there are a number of our labor people knocking on doors in District 10 today for, for the endorsed candidates, uh, Ron Nirenberg and Ezra Johnson. Um, and so uh, we're, we're putting forth a great effort. Uh, come join us on the 18th. You'll have a lot of fun and write a check. Will, will, will we be receiving an invitation uh, or will it be on Facebook? Because you can also use us as a co-host uh, to your event. Could we? Is that okay for us to do, uh, Bob? We will certainly list and uh, appreciate it. Okay. Uh, anybody else that wants to co-host, we're still putting that that uh, that list together, and okay. the, the levels are five hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty, or hundred dollars for the co-hosting. And of course, when we have the actual event on the eighteenth, there will be uh, much smaller donation levels. Uh, April fifteenth is Ezra's birthday. We're going to be celebrating it on April the eighteenth. He'll be. <laughs> He'll be 45, so anybody wants to give 45 bucks for him, that's wonderful. Anybody wants to give 10 bucks, 10 for 10, $10 for District 10. And then we're also doing something interesting. Uh, uh, there are three other levels. Uh, $28 would buy you a VIA monthly bus pass. Right. And a, there's a weekly bus pass and there's a daily bus pass. So all donations are welcome from $2.60 all the way up to up to the maximum right. five. Well, I hope people don't think that that's a tax. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, Bob, I delivered about five votes for him already. So, yeah, all right. But I got a group that is, and they all are voting for him. Great. Well, send, me their, send me their list, Al, so we can mark them down, because we want to make sure that we, we keep track of them and, and communicate with them, because there could be a runoff election. OK. Uh, well, I, I will check with them if that's okay, but I th it's a group that I meet with regularly and they all live in that district and they all are going to vote for him though. That's, what it, takes. that's okay. what it takes. And by the way, we have carefully targeted the ballot by mail, which is one of the reasons why the opposition wants to take it away from us. All right. But uh, throughout the city, throughout the city, over 80% of the people who have returned their ballot by mail, and that's only, a, only about 300 people, the 80% of the, the 300 who have returned it have been on our targeted list. So right. that, bodes, that bodes very, very well. But I think after May 1st, when we have a, a definitive number of people who have, valid, who have voted by mail, 
I think we may want to take a look at that list of maybe 10, 15,000, maybe even more people and see yeah. how we can get word to them about what the Republicans are trying to do with their right to safely vote at home. Because a lot of them are not paying attention. A lot of them don't know it's fixed to be stripped away from them. And we need to wake them up. So we need to be considering that at our next meeting, perhaps, of how do we get that, that information out to them. And in that regard, I just want to remind everybody, everybody here in Adante has to vote by mail. Uh, we don't, we're not free to go out and vote at a voting booth anymore. And that's true probably of many of the retirement or independent living homes around the town. So yeah. when they, but of course, a lot of them are Republicans. So when they limit the voting by mail, you're probably limiting more Republicans than you are Democrats <laughs> in our <laughs> complex. Anyway, uh, thank you, Bob. Yes. Oh, um, uh, before we go, uh, Bob, will you put- well, Hold on, uh, Sandy. John Owens has his hands up. I, I know, I just wanna, I wanna go to him, but uh, Bob, will you put in the chat uh, the, the, uh, the April 18th or April 15th, whatever, and the, the time that that event is gonna go on. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, long awaited. John Owens has been very patient. Okay, Hello, John. everyone. Hello. How are you, everyone? Uh, I uh, I am coming in, uh, Mr. Tyrone Darton. I, I hope this is a good time to uh, to bring this up. Mr. Tyrone Darton had planned on being in the meeting today, but as you know, he's on the campaign trail for uh, councilman for District Two. So I, I, I'd like to extend a uh, thank you uh, for Mr. Darton for uh, the support that. Uh, that the, the club is 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 giving, and uh, so I just wanted to uh, to stand up and and say thank you from Tyrone Darton for the endorsement. Our pleasure. Thank Our you. pleasure, uh, Mr. Owens, uh, John. Uh, is there anything that um, that like I was saying about uh, offering uh, uh, some help from communications? Uh, about any events that uh, Mr. Darden has or anything like that, you need to, to bring it to my attention, mine or Martha's attention, uh, so that we can either add an event when we're just before we're having maybe our next meeting, mm, probably not, but, um, uh, but uh, anything that you have that I can promote for you or we can co-host are you still there? Okay. Uh, co-host on Facebook. Um, please let us know. Um, send the co-host invitation. Also send me a text. I'll put my phone number in the chat box here. Okay. I, I appreciate it. I am headed over to the campaign office here as soon as the meeting is over and uh, I will get with you. I think I have all of your uh, contact information, numbers okay. and, and emails. I appreciate it. Thank you all. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Okay, great. Uh, um, the second item of the new business is, is uh, a meeting speakers or activities for May 8th and June the uh, 12th. Uh, <clears throat> I do believe that we had, in fact, suggested that we would like to have all on the line on May the 8th. Uh, uh, Martha, could you make those arrangements for us? Okay. So we will do all on the line <clears throat> uh, on May. Are any suggestions for June the 12th? Well, uh, I'll speak at the same time. Al? Can I raise a question? Is there any plan to go back to the church and meet face to face now that most of us are, are being vaccinated? I, I, I would say, you know, just personally speaking, that I, I, don't, I don't want to do it at, until perhaps late in the summer. July. Uh, August, something like July, that. July, August. Um, okay. Um, not every, I not everybody's been vaccinated all the way. Yeah. Um, we will. We will see. Um, we'll discuss it in the executive board uh, and see how it's uh, how the levels of vaccination uh, and the uh, if we if we get another another infection spike and I understand that this uh, British variant. It, which is um, more highly contagious, is 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 the dominant strain in the United States at the present time. So we need to be careful. Uh, 
but uh, we will discuss it. And, and when we can get back to meeting in person, you, you certain, certainly will. I, but I don't think it will be before, I don't think it will be, be before August, uh, frankly. Okay. Um, any suggestions for a, uh, a speaker or, or an activity even uh, for the June 12th meeting? Any suggestions are welcome. If you, if you can't think of anything now and come up with something, please feel free to send me an email, um, rwmiller7 at hotmail.com. I'll put it in the chat. Um, uh, okay. Or go to our website. Please go to our website. <laughs> Yeah, or go to the website, right? Please go to our website. <laughs> uh, okay. So, is there any other new business? Someone new has, business? has asked in the chat here, invite speakers from RISIS, R-A-I-C-E-S. RISIS, yeah. RISIS. RISIS. Yeah, that's, that's the group that's doing the immigrant uh, things. And as a matter of fact, uh, Gloria Gutierrez from the office, our Bear County Treasurer, was volunteering at Freeman Coliseum, and she said that it just really chapped her boots when she left there and heard, you know, on the news, uh, Al uh, Abbott's downplaying the thing. She said, you know, there are people who are walking, there are volunteers who are walking the floors at night, making sure that everybody's safe. There's plenty of food for the kids. There are activities sponsored at all times. And uh, she's just not seeing the uh, anything that Abbott's talking about. It's strictly political. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do they need do they have any needs? I think I posted for a bunch of people um, a, um, a link to I think something Catholic charities where you can do make some donations. Right. Um, do, do, you, do they have any needs, do you know, of, uh, Madeline? I, I'm not aware of them. They, apparently they have piles of, you know, that they had needed duffel bags and they finally got it, because, but they have just all kinds. They have cots, they have blankets, they have pillows, they have sheets and pillowcases, and they have like three pairs of underwear and two shirts and two two tennis, you know. Uh, so maybe they'll need and, suitcases you know, or, or duffel bags or stuff like that when they yeah, Well, they, 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 uh, the duffel bags came in, you know, oh, so, okay. um, All right. so I, I'm not aware of, you might talk to Gloria, but I'm not aware of anything that they need at the moment. Right. <coughs> Homeland Security is pretty well financed, so, you know. Christian Assistance Ministries is giving Johnson <laughs> vaccines to the homeless. All right. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> I do have to say, I want to uh, mention this because um, because uh, Nancy sent me a link. I did not go to the BBAD meeting with Ron Nuremberg, but they have new leadership now, and I don't know the woman's name, but she had she provided the meeting and was really a fantastic I was so well done and so professional and she had um uh a, a professor from urban studies at trinity university her name's oh the president now why do we call him president uh is denise richter and uh so there was a woman from uh uh, urban studies and then uh, Ron Nuremberg there and talking about things I really was an eye-opener you know uh, about the equity and how um, all that, that they're that they passed a, 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 a an ordinance or something with they they've made a bargain that they're going to be equitable um, among the districts um, and uh, what's interesting about it is that like around district two and uh, probably uh, one, two and one, they, they put in all this infrastructure. And then what happens is that all of these investors come in and they buy up all the properties and all the, the, uh, the property rates go sky high. And then the people can't afford to live there anymore. That's and, right. Um, and so uh, I, what I, that's what I thought was interesting. And so they're thinking about trying to do something in order to protect the people that are there once once they put all that money into it 
they want to be able to keep that. That's really for the people that have been there. They for the roads and the and the and the the, the housing and uh, facilities and parks and all sorts of stuff that they do that they put in for for the that community. Uh, and then we get, you know, uh, people from Austin or all over the United States now. And I tell you, because I'm a realtor that uh, I mean, daily, daily, I get two or three uh, texts or emails or phone calls from people saying, hey, I have these investors. Do you have any properties? And, you know, I just don't go for those because um, I'm really about uh, building the um, uh, protecting the people's uh, equity rather than having them just say, oh, you know, I'm so tired of this, I'll give it up and I'll just hand it over to somebody else. Okay, the problem is more of a generational thing. For those of us who are senior citizens who have been living in the neighborhoods for years, we're, we're fairly well protected because our taxes are frozen. But when I die, I don't think that my son will be able to continue living in the house that he's grown up in. I mean, it, it's, it's that bad. Um, right. And I get calls twice a week from people who want to buy my house and they want to flip it. I mean, yeah, they want to buy it. And then they, they're asking me to go out and look for people, too, you know, uh, that, that want to sell their home. Uh, it, it's really a barrage right now. And I think it is. Uh, and you don't know who's who's going to take, you know, be, be your neighbor. You know, you don't know what's going on. And it's uh, go ahead. Gal. Is is the growth of San Antonio and Bear County. We are a booming community. I've never lived anywhere, and I've been all over the country, I've never lived anywhere where there was so much booming pressure with new industries, new people coming, looking for establishment because San Antonio is a great place to live. Uh, so you're going to have this uh, pressure that's going to continue to build up. My wife went back and looked at her house it's doubled in price since we left there mm -hmm. i mean that's only five years ago it's it's crazy the 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 people that are moving into my neighborhood beacon hill are coming a lot of them are coming from new york and california and they see a house for two hundred and seventy five thousand that <laughs> they they were living that's half again as big as a house that they lived in in california for seven hundred thousand Exactly. And willing to pay, you know. That's right. Oh, send them my way. <laughs> <laughs> send them my way. <laughs> okay. There's one well, other thing I would like to mention. Susan Corbel is president of a group. And it's San Antonio. Oh, Susan, help me. It's San Antonio. It, it's, it's phenomenal. You put in the website and you put in your, your precinct, your community, code, community resources. Community resources, right. And you put in your zip code and there's a bar on the top. If you've got any people in your neighborhood that need legal help, food, housing, <coughs> health, mental health, <coughs> anything. Um, it, it's just, it's as a, when I was a social worker years ago, we used to have this great big book. It was always out of date with resources in it and the numbers didn't work and the groups weren't there and things that were there that that came in weren't in the book and so on and so forth. And this is you know a, a a a website that can grow and change as things change it's phenomenal everybody should have that information so that when they're working with their precincts or they're working with their neighbors and their neighbors need something there's the resources Thank what you, Madeline. Website, uh, could you put the website in the chat? Uh... Yeah, it's sacrd.org. And I encourage everybody, if you're involved with an organization and it's not in there, uh, we do have a form for you to fill out because we want everybody to have access to everything. And we do Thank have you. some flyers at the Bear County Democratic Party for anybody who wants a flyer about the program. And again, what is that uh, website again, Susan? I'll put it in the chat, sacrd.org. Okay. It's pronounced sacred.org, but without the E. All right. So is there any um, anything, any other new business to come before this August body? Okay. Mr. President? 
Yes. Um, I'm not a president, I'm a chair. Well, Mr. Chair. Don't sit on me, but I am a chair. We, <laughs> a vice chair. I'm a chair in, in charge of vice. That's it. Very good. Well, uh, in our labor meetings, the last thing on our agenda is for good and welfare. And I suggest we put something like that on there because it's not really an announcement, but it is a comment. And I think it is for the good and welfare. And that is the issue of Proposition B. Uh, when we had our meeting of the Central Labor Council with, with uh, uh, members of FIX SAPD, one of our delegates said this was a very, very contentious meeting. And another one of our delegates said, if you think this was contentious, you ought to have Thanksgiving dinner with me. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, engaged in, and uh, spirited uh, are good things, They're good things for democracy. And I think we had that here today. Um, but my concern is that, I mean, passions on both sides are very, very high. We've got to make sure we take very great strides not to let this divide this organization Right. The Bear County Democratic Party. I so I think we need to uh, exude fairness to all points of view, to all sides. And Mr. Chair, I think you did that in this meeting and I can congratulate you. Well, uh, thank you. I, we, we do uh, want to uh, give uh, fair representation to all, to all sides of issues that concern us, but we do uh, have to remember that we're all Democrats and in the, at the end of the day, our uh, obligation is to elect Democrats to office, defeat the Republicans, and uh, reflect our, our progressive values. Okay. And, re and remember, the many, many years Bob worked as a diplomat have really shown through for many, many things, including a, a trial with Ben, uh, you know, and everything else. So he keeps he keeps the the um, the, the extremes toned down, including me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody can hold you down, that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I find right. that hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, is there any other uh, any other business? Any other business? Okay. Uh, I do. We do have a few. I know if they're in close. Uh, is there any? Um, are there any announcements that anyone would like to make? No. no. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, second. It's, it's moved and seconded to adjourn. Um, please uh, make your wishes known uh, in the, uh, uh, by the, the yes button or raising your hand, either one is fine. Okay. Okay, then we are adjourned. Thank you so very much for coming out uh, this morning and uh, go out and vote. <laughs> That's all I can say. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.